Well, it would seem once more, at least for a little while longer, Texas might not be back just yet. Number six LSU goes into Austin this weekend and beats the Texas Longhorns 45-38 in a thrilling game. This was, man, this was a very back and forth game because Texas played right there on their level. But really where I think this game was decided, I know this might sound crazy because obviously Texas with the near onside recovery at the end of the game pretty much was right there, right? They were within seven, nearly got one more crack at it uh, with about 22 seconds left. But really this game, if you want to look back at the mistakes where you say that's where you lost the game, I feel like it has to be in the first half. Texas gets back to back possessions all the way down inside the LSU five. They go for it on fourth and goal first and drop a pass. Brilliant call on the play. Ellinger puts the ball on the money. The receiver just cannot haul it in and ends up dropping it. So LSU takes over. And I want to say on second and nine at that point, LSU has the pass tipped, intercepted by Texas, back down to the four-yard line again. So you came away with zero points last possession, but you still have a chance you get right back down there again, get down to the one yard line and then draw a draw. It looks like for Ellinger Ellinger sacked two yards behind the line of scrimmage. So two possessions inside the LSU five yard line in a row in the span of about five minutes, like real time, five minutes. And you walk away with zero points. Could have had as many as 14 at the very least six. I know six doesn't decide the game, but it does a lot for the momentum in that case. You know, LSU, when they get their last touchdown, they go for two and get it just to put the score out of a certain reach, make it so Texas is 14 down instead of 13. Uh, Big, big game for Texas in this case. They hung tight. They fall back 20 to seven in the first half, but they rally back. Sam Allinger again with another solid game, 31 of 47, 401 yards, uh, 12.9 a pop. That's nice. Four touchdowns, no picks, but he was sacked five times. LSU is the best defense Texas has faced this year. I think they were better than what Georgia was last year, obviously. And LSU, man, they've always had the defense. The offense has always been what's suspect for them. But holy cow, does that LSU offense finally now that it's in the modern era of play calling, they look like a they look like a complete team. I would not be the least bit surprised if they jump, uh, for instance, Oklahoma at four. I can't think off the top of my head who's number five, but this was just a a clinic by LSU and Texas. Hey, credit to you, man. You you stayed right there. Uh, stat leader is Burrow. For the Tigers, he has 31 of 39, another phenomenal day passing for him. 471 yards, four touchdowns. I did mention he was intercepted down inside his own 10-yard line. That was rough. Uh, And sacked four times, so the Texas defensive front got after him a little bit. But Burrow, man, man, he just, he lit him up. I'll tell you this, Texas has a young defense. They lost a lot of seniors off last year's team. But the biggest problem for Texas right now is that secondary. That secondary, they looked incredibly, incredibly weak and overmatched in this case. Now, I think they'll improve as the year goes on. That's what happens when you have a young secondary. But their secondary last year almost reminded me of Oklahoma the last couple years in that you you have so much talent elsewhere, but then you have the defense now has dropped off a little bit for them, and that secondary looks like it can be had. Uh, An example of that, you had Edward Teller go 15 carries, 87 yards. It's 5.8 a pop. Got a touchdown as well. Uh, Jefferson, the Bengals, well, Bengals, the Bayou Bengals is where I was going with that. Uh, Wide receiver there for LSU goes 11 targets, 9 receptions, 163 yards, and 3 touchdowns. 163 yards on 9 catches and 3 touchdowns. He and Burrow slaughtered Texas in this game. Chase, not to be outdone, LSU had three receivers go over 120 reception yards. That's insane. Chase adds another eight for 147, and then Marshall gives you six for 123. The Texas secondary was demolished in this game. They were embarrassed in this game, and that's a shame because Texas was so close 
to what I think is a great LSU team. They were so close, and it was just that one aspect of their team that was so embarrassingly overmatched that they couldn't do anything to stop them. I mean, it's it's crazy when you get down to it, uh, just how how close Texas was despite that one glaring, uh, glaringly overmatched aspect. Also for Texas, rushing the ball, Ellinger, 19 carries for 60 yards and a touchdown. That's nice. It's only 3.2 a pop, but, you know, I, I think part of the problem is for Texas, I, I mentioned earlier the back-to-back -back drives inside the LSU, five walking away with zero points. They rally. In fact, they cut it twice to a two-point game. It was 23-21. Texas rallied all the way back. Uh, LSU answers with the touchdown, and then uh, Texas answers. So you get down to a, what was it, 30, roughly 30 to 28 game. And then LSU pretty much was like, all right, that's cute, but we're done messing around. And LSU puts two of them on them in a row. I, I talked about the secondary. Third and 17. Third and 17 in a seven-point game with under four minutes to play. It's right there for Texas. Get the ball back. You have all the momentum in the world. Just get the ball back and see what you can do. You've had monster games out of Duvernay, out of... Eagles. Eagles, man, I, I'm really impressed with Texas's wide receiver uh, Eagles. Five for 116 and a touchdown. He had a great touchdown earlier in the game. A twisting catch broke away from the defender and ran it in. Uh, great, great play out of him. Duvernay, another solid game. 12 for 154 and two touchdowns. Also threw an eight-yard pass to Ellinger early on in the game. Uh, Johnson, three for 49. I mean, Texas had quality from its receiving core. But in the end, they, they couldn't get the stops on defense. Third and 17, not only do you give up the first down, you give up 61 yards to the house. And I think at that point, it was like 253 left in the game. And then, so LSU gets that to get to 43 points. And then they convert the two-point conversion. And now all of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, it's 45-31. I mean, it's just amazing how quickly it got away from them. Now, again, to Texas's credit, they go down the field and they they improbably score again. They get a touchdown with about 22, 23 seconds left. And in their answer, they have to attempt an onside kick. And man, they drew it up perfect. They got exactly the bounce they wanted. And they sent the right guy out there. They sent Johnson out there. You talk about a big, long frame to throw out there to, uh, to recover. Full extension dive along the sideline. If he gets the ball there, again, there's about 21, 22 seconds left at that point. I don't know that Texas is able to do anything in the way of tying it up, but man, oh man, with the positioning they would have had, Texas would have had some opportunity there. I don't know if the game gets to overtime. I don't know if Texas can continue to fend off LSU because, again, their secondary was just overmatched. Uh, you had... You had, what was it, Chase and Jefferson pretty much mossing guys on Texas left and right. There were just huge cushions anytime they needed it. The, the defensive backs for Texas just, they couldn't stop anything that LSU was throwing at them. Now, Texas, with their big receivers, they, they're used to doing that to other teams, frankly. So seeing it kind of a taste of their own medicine was interesting. But, man, LSU escapes 45-38. This felt like a big, big opportunity for Texas to get there. I, I, I still would have been like 80%, 85% sure if Texas had won that I would have been like, all right, they're back. But to me, you got to put together back-to-back -to -back 10 win seasons and a conference title at least, at least one conference title in there for me to say back. So I was reluctant because I feel like one season can be an anomaly. Two seasons shows a trend. By three seasons, it's like, all right, we're here. That's just how I look at it. Uh, and in this regard, looking at this, this felt like a major opportunity for Texas to get a serious statement victory. This is the part of the year where they usually can surprise people a little bit. LSU is the best defense Sam Ellinger and them have gone up against, and he got roughed up a little bit. Uh, it wasn't his best day. Again, 31 of 47 passing. That's a lot of pass attempts for Texas, and we know that their running back situation is a problem. They do not have the kind of depth they want at running back right now due to some injuries and things like that. So it made him a little one dimensional with a quarterback who is very good, but I still don't think he has the arm talent of, I mean, even in this case, Burrow 
looked like he had better arm talent, but you know, not to not to invoke any other any further rage from Longhorn fans. I'm not attempting to do that. I'm not trying to rub salt in the wound or anything like that. It's it's a great game from Texas. A lot of heart. I think they are absolutely on the right track. It's just a matter of now that you've seen where you measure up to this kind of team, you have to find a way to get that next step. For the last couple of years, the Texas defense was elite and the offense just wasn't quite there. Now the offense looks like it's largely there, but now, interestingly, it's the defense that's fallen off because of all the youth that they have. I feel pretty good that they're going to be able to get things back on track, but I think it's going to take later in the year. I don't I don't think this hurts anything. I don't think this is like a bad omen for their contention this year. Uh, even, even as it pertains to like the college football playoff scenario, again, I think LSU is a very, very good team. I didn't think that the LSU offense was real after week one. I kind of stepped back and was like, okay, that's promising, but can you do it against a, a good defense? And I think Texas is a pretty good defense right now, but how could you do it? And could you outscore basically uh, a big 12 offense? And yeah, turns out they can, they came into Austin and they, that's a tough environment and they got it done. So I, I think LSU is for real. I think LSU should jump up in the polls a little bit, probably to three or four, maybe three is a little high, but certainly to four. And if that's the case, this could be interesting. This does not hurt Texas in regards to potential college football playoff. Obviously, it's not a conference game, so it's not going to hurt them in the standings for the Big 12 championship game. I think there's a lot to look for here if you're Texas. And if you do get to the end of the year, let's say Texas wins the Big 12 championship, for instance, if they can take this experience against LSU into the playoff with whatever matchup it is, you can take a lot from this game for that game in the playoff if you get to that level there's a lot you can learn from this even though you lose you 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 gain more in that regard from losses than you do from victories you learn more from loss than you do from victory so uh texas you're not there yet you're not back yet but you're close oh Almost forgot to mention the controversial play. I don't even think it was really controversial. Uh, when Texas has it cut to seven before they give up the third and 17, 61-yard bomb, uh, they have a controversial play where LSU throws a first down. The receiver comes down with the ball. Elbow hits the turf. Ball pops free. Texas recovers. Crowd goes nuts. A head official comes in and rules, rules the runner down in that case. They review it. Uh, you get the dramatic review, and then, of course, when they, I think, rightly keep the ball with LSU, the ball doesn't look like it moves at all until his elbow makes contact with the turf, thereby signifying he's down. At that point, it's the ball popping free because of the jolt of the ground as he's going down. Uh, at that point, you get the... And credit to the cameramen. They always find, no matter who the game is or who's playing, they always find the crying kid in the audience, and you just have a young man out there just devastated by the call because he knows it probably means Texas has lost the game. Uh, it, <laughs> prophetic, man, because then a couple plays later, you get that 61-yard bomb, and that just completely... That, that took Texas out of it. I know, again, how close they came, but at that point, it just with the time that was left, it just was, I think, too insurmountable for them. If Even if they had held them to a field goal somehow there or let alone if they had made them punt it, I think Texas still had a really good shot. But when that play happened, it just felt like the air deflating out of the balloon, and you pretty much knew, all right, the defense isn't going to give us anything else the rest of the way. We have to rely on the offense. And to their credit, almost got away with it. So uh, as much as it can be, good loss for Texas. If you're going to lose a game, this is the time of year to do it very early on. If you lose beyond like week five, maybe six, you're usually really hard-pressed to get back into that contention picture, unless you're in Alabama, in which case you can lose the final week of the regular season and still make the playoff, even though you're not even in your own conference championship game. But you know what? I digress. Uh, so Texas, good game. Again, that was the only game I even care to cover this week from the Big 12. Not much any, not much of any note anywhere else. No point in talking about a 70-14 to 14 win or anything for OU uh, or any of the other games. I did see that Mizzou, I mentioned Mizzou and West Virginia were facing off, and it was kind of a, a somewhat interesting game for me just because it was a former Big 12 matchup. Mizzou kicked the dog snot 
out of West Virginia. And West Virginia now looks like they might be at the bottom of the Big 12 in terms of uh, complete team. They, they look like they're in the cellar of the Big 12. Not Kansas bad. And you know what? Kansas looks like they're improving too with less smiles. So I don't know. Maybe West Virginia is going to be in that basement for a little bit. But ugh, rough day for Austin Kendall. But I digress. Texas, you're on the right path. Hang tight. A uh, lot, lot to look forward to. Not there yet, but on your way.